The internet has become a trading ground of lost innocence, a dark side of the information highway some may never know exists except those looking to prey on children. Veteran Decatur Police Detective Ron Borachek recently was part of the investigation that put a 21-year-old Decatur man in prison for 15 years on federal charges of distribution of child porn. Purveyors of child pornography often try to hide behind technology, increasingly using mobile apps with voice and video connection. And we got hit with one here recently, it's called the After School, After School app. Again, it's they're getting ready to integrate both voice and uh, video. Uh, and in addition to the 50 to 80 other ones that we're always trying to keep up with. Predators, he says, are only getting smarter to be anonymous. We're moving from the computers to mobile devices, and within the mobile devices, there's a lot of different applications that uh, will allow you to create a virtual phone number, to create a virtual account, to create a virtual identity. There are those who download and possess graphic images, those who lure children with the intent to produce it, and those who traffic the images to others online or in person. It's the, it's the predator putting themselves in, in, front of the, in front of the victim and becoming the de facto parent, the de facto best friend, the de facto person they're turning to, you know. And that's, you know, so they isolate the victim from parental involvement, isolate the victim from friend involvement. That kind of thing happens, and it happens very quickly. Retired clinical psychologist, Dr. Stephen Bopp, says it's a problem that's only getting worse. More than a million pictures of uh, children in terms of child pornography are on the internet at any given moment. It, 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 and it's an increasing epidemic, particularly the studies that have been done since 2010. It's just gone on exponentially. Oftentimes, Google cyber tips go to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. We are proactive on the internet and we are out looking for these people. Um, we are on the peer-to-peer -peer networks. We also do a, uh, operate in uh, what's called a limited undercover capacity, um, either responding to advertisements or putting an advertisement up. That leads to investigations by police and the FBI, with cases brought as part of Project Safe Childhood by the U.S. Department of Justice. The ones who are apprehended are incarcerated and can spend up to 20 years in prison. When they come out, unfortunately, the recidivism rate is very high. So they, there is very little that can be done psychologically. Psychotherapy seems to have little impact on them. A conviction leads to becoming a registered sex offender, which impacts where they can live and work after release. For victims, it's a lifelong struggle of feelings beyond betrayal and abuse. They can experience uh, sexual dysfunctions as they move into late teens and uh, early adulthood, uh, poor interpersonal relationships, uh, feelings of uh, the, the typical victim syndrome uh, where they have feelings of, of guilt and shame. There is also an emotional impact for investigators who need mental health training because of what they see. Letting them know that it's okay to be disturbed by it, you know because you're, you're cops, so you're supposed to be bulletproof, you're supposed to be Teflon, you're supposed to be able to take anything. Well, the reality is, is there the, the little, it's the little things that'll set you off. There are still many cases under active investigation as the work of law enforcement does not stop, as the crimes do not stop. Lost innocence at the hands of those who seek their own pleasure at the expense of children.